Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today, I'm excited to bring you this review. We're gonna be taking a look at the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer. This is a brand new version, just came out, references way 2015.BA0927. Now, as soon as I saw pictures of this, I texted an authorized dealer that I trust in North Carolina. I said, hey, can you get me this watch? I think it looks fantastic, I can't wait to video it. So I bought this one brand new. I got a nice discount off retail price. I'll put the contact information in the description if anyone else is interested in doing something similar. Now again, this is the new Aqua Racer. It's the beautiful green dial version. I'm calling it the Emerald. I know some of you guys are gonna call it a watch that you can only wear on St. Patrick's Day. It's a leprechaun, but I think it is simply stunning. And hopefully by these pictures and videos, you guys can see how visually dynamic just how verdant and just how fun this dial combination is. I love how it plays with the stainless steel bezel. I think it really helps enhance the green, help it pop. And uh, the, the teak texture or the plank dial looks very sharp. I like the sunray finish. Again, the hue of the green is spot on. And how it plays with these rhodium plated applied markers, beveled handset, it is, uh, it's just so much fun. So my wrists are 7.25 inches in circumference. You guys can see it's a rather large watch at 43 millimeters, a little bit more depending on where you measure it, if you're counting the crown guard or not. Uh, but it's a nice thin profile. This comes in at about 12.65 millimeters in overall height, which is really good for a 300 meter diver of this size and weight. I really like how it plays on the wrist and how the lugs kind of taper down a little bit, angle down, and uh, just follow the natural curvature of your wrist. Now, I need to address something. I know a lot of you that watch this video are like me. You're a crazy watch idiot savant. And a lot of uh, watch idiot savants, they kind of have this view of tag, uh, this negative view of tag where they say, well, I appreciate vintage Hoyer. I like the Monaco, and that's about it. Modern Tag is crap. <laughs> I don't feel that way at all. I think that's ridiculous. I think it's uninformed, and I think a lot of instances, it is sheep think. You're just parroting things that you hear. So we're gonna get into the details on this watch. I think it's a great watch. It has some serious flaws, and we're gonna get into that. We're gonna take an objective look. But I hope at the end of the video, uh, maybe I've converted a few of you tag haters to actually consider this watch because you know what? It's very solid for the price point. Now, I really like the addition of the modern Tag Heuer logo on that flat section just below the 12 o'clock position. You'll notice Tag is done in a more bold contemporary font. It's a little bit uh, shorter in elevation. The old Tag font was taller and had these quirky arrows going in different directions. I was never a fan of it and I do like this modern logo. You'll find it here on this Aqua Racer. And uh, just look at the small details there. It's just very clean, very well executed. I like the beveling on the rhodium plated applied markers and on the handset. And I am a fan of the Cyclops. I know some of you guys do not like Cyclops, but you know, magnifying the date, making it a little easier to read at a glance, I think enhances the user experience personally. So I do like the Cyclops. And uh, just overall, as you guys can see, it's just very well done. The ridges are sharp and defined. You can see the sunray grain. The light play is awesome. And uh, here's another highlight. Let's take a look at the watch in low light. You can see a bicolor application of Superluminova, and it's very potent. Uh, you guys can see it's bright, it's sharp. You can see the clear distinction of different tones. I always find that uh, I always find that fun. So the loom is is definitely a highlight of the watch. Now let's zoom out and talk about the bezel action. We have 120 click action, very easy to turn. There's not going to be plays in between position. And overall, I think this is one of the nicer bezels that I've handled at the price point. Now let's talk about the negative aspects um, or more, some of the more controversial aspects. Some people say that TAG use base grade Solitas set in huge plastic spacers. I've heard people say they're using ETA movements. Uh, I decided to get to the bottom of what's really inside the Aqua Racer, the Caliber 5. I took it to my watchmaker, we opened it up, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what's inside the watch. So you guys can see 
Right off the bat, yes, there is a large plastic spacer, which I find incredibly uh, just disappointing. I mean, it's functional, sure, but uh, wouldn't it be nicer to have a metal spacer? I know it's gonna be a little bit more expensive and add some weight to an already hefty watch, but seeing the plastic, uh, that is definitely a bit of a letdown. And I can hear some of you guys in the comments going, it is a big plastic spacer. I would never spend a thousand dollars on that. That's totally crap. Dude, it settled down a little bit. Yes, it's disappointing, but it's not the end of the world. Let's take a look at the movement. The movement is not a Salita. They are using an ETA 2824-2 upgraded. You can see very nice finishing here, perlage work, Geneva striping. There are no blued screws. This isn't the Elabor grade, but it's very handsome. And I put it on the time grapher. We did a six position test. And you guys can see screaming amplitude. It's, it's really high. There's a great delta. And the watch averages plus 12 seconds, depending on which position that it's in. So again, it's a great movement. I would prefer it to a Salita personally. I like the finishing, but the, the negative aspect definitely is the large plastic spacer. Let's change that to metal. That would, be, uh, that would be received very well. Now let's zoom back out and talk about some of the other elements of the watch. Let's talk about the bracelet. Bracelet is very well made. It's uh, fully articulating. The links are fairly thick, a little thicker than what I'm used to. Um, and they're held together via a pin and tube system. There's a long tube that goes all the way through the center of the link. So it's a very secure fit and I like the clasp. It's milled, it's signed, it's substantial. There are uh, rather large buttons here for the action. And then you've got three different micro adjustment holes. Overall, I really like the clasp. The only negative aspect or the thing that I don't like is your dive extension, which is a cheap press metal. I could do without that and uh, maybe some more micro adjustment holes personally. Uh, but other than that, let's let's go back to the watch and wrap up the video. I think it's really solid. I like the finishing. I like the bezel action, the dial details, and even details here on the stainless steel bezel. You can see a clean delineation of uh, brushed and polished surfaces here. I like the tabs. Overall, I think it's a solid watch. It's got a good movement. And apart from the plastic spacer, there really isn't anything to complain about. Tag, if you don't like, uh, if you don't like a watch, you can only wear on St. Patrick's Day. They do offer other colors. Uh, they offer a ceramic bezel. They also offer a smaller size for those of you that don't like the 43 millimeter size. So I think as a whole, it's very, very well done. Uh, there's just uh, one thing that I don't like about it, and that's that plastic spacer. Other than that, this is probably one of the best watches you could buy sub $2,000 and enjoy on a day-to-day -day basis. This is a very solid Swiss made diver. Um, what could you buy at the price point? What do you compare this to? I think a good, uh, a good comparison would be the Oris Aquis. This tag retails at $2,300 on a bracelet. The Oris Aquis in green on a bracelet retails for $2,100. So they're very comparable. You're, you're probably gonna get very similar discounts from an authorized dealer. And the Aquis is awesome. It's really held to a high standard by the watch community. The same watch idiot savants that poo poo on tag are talking about how great Oris is. And I do think the Aquis is awesome. It's visually beautiful. It's original. Uh, you look at their movement and they are using a Salita that they put a red rotor on. It's a base Salita. And if you look in the instructions, it's regulated to within about 25 seconds per day acceptable daily deviation. So just about the same as this uh, Tag Heuer that carries the ETA. And I would say if you're seriously considering an Aquis, you should look into this one, especially if you're not a fan of integrated lugs. This one does have a traditional lug uh, system and bracelet, so uh, it's easier for uh, changing out the straps, putting it on rubber, leather, or uh, Perlon, NATO, whatever you you know, whatever you're feeling. Another good comparison, I think, is the Monta Ocean King. The Ocean King is similarly priced. They're using a beautiful Celia SW300. It's nice and thin. It's got a great bracelet. Definitely a good one to consider at the price point. Uh, what else are you looking at? You're probably looking at a used Omega Speedmaster. 
You're probably uh, looking at quartz in the bond era. You could probably find a Cal 1120 on the upper end, but it's gonna most likely be a little beat up and maybe in need of a service. So for the price point, I would pick this over a Longines. I would pick this over some of those other options, or at least consider this right alongside the Oris Aquis. Uh, for those of you propping up the Aquis, <laughs> I think you should be uh, expressing similar sentiment here on this Tag Heuer. It's not a crappy watch. It's not overpriced. It's, uh, it's not a joke. It's very solid, and that's, that's my opinion, and I'm sticking with it. Uh, I've, I've only watched, I put my money where my mouth is. I've worn it, I've looked at the movement, I've seen the performance, I've looked at the details and the weight and uh, everything about the watch during my brief time of ownership and I can definitely say, this is a fun one. This is definitely a good one to consider, especially if you're looking for one watch as a daily wear piece that you can take in water, take in almost any situation and still get that visual pop and presence that we like to see from uh, just beautiful Swiss watches. So anyways, guys, those are my thoughts on the Aqua Racer, this new emerald green tag uh, Hoyer Aqua Racer that I think is just so beautiful. A little controversial, yes, but uh, definitely a very, very fun watch. Hopefully you found the video enjoyable, informative, um, and uh, let me know if you have any specific questions. I'll see you in the next one.